Hey friends, welcome to the latest lo-fi let's play with me, Lee Alexander. If this is your first time um, doing lo-fi let's plays, then welcome. Um, I'm glad you came to join us as we gently revisit some classic games from the 1980s and the 1990s. Um, today we will be playing Loom from Lucasfilm Games, and this sort of violates an internal stated policy I have for the series, which is no hits. You know, I'm always sort of interested in, in finding things that you might not have heard of, and not only appealing to your nostalgia, but truly studying old design forms and, and the trends of the age, because I think they still have a lot to teach us, these beautiful old adventure games. And yet here we are today with Loom, which, you know, to me, is a hit. Um, I don't know if it was a hit commercially. I just recently watched a post-mortem of this game at uh, this year's GDC with Professor Brian Moriarty, who was the director on this title, and he told me that market research at the time tended to uh, suggest that people were drawn to prefer games that they could finish. Many of the adventure games of the age were, you know, quite hard. And uh, so with Loom, what they set out to do was to make a game that would offer the player some puzzles and some challenge, but uh, nothing that felt inherently unfair, nothing that was going to uh, necessarily frustrate them. And this was actually controversial to audiences at the time because, you know, I, I'm a long-time adventure game player, and for me, part of the experience is that I enjoy being frustrated. But as you can see, what we have here is, is a beautiful game that opens with the music of, of Swan Lake and this slow panorama. Um, it was actually amazing what they achieved graphically. Uh, I recently learned it was um, something to do with uh, being able to uh, create these gradients through dithering without uh, increasing file sizes too much. So as you see, we're this little fella on a hill here. His name is Bobbin. He belongs to the Guild of Weavers, which is something that you know if you were to listen to the audiobook that accompanied the Loom package at the time that it came out, and uh, a radio play of sorts. Um, it's sort of interesting. So as you can see, we've let fall the last leaf of the year simply by touching it. And that's kind of one of the amazing things about this game, is that the controls themselves are very simple. You just simply move by touching where you want to go. Um, Bobbin has said that uh, he'd like to get down to the village, so uh, we're going to do that. And you uh, can hear the beautiful, uh, for its time, symphonic music. Uh, Mr. George Sanger, a audio legend among games, did the arrangement of Swan Lake for uh, this fascinating little mythology about the age of the great guilds and, and the different things that people in, in each guild do. So as you can see, this is our village. Everything here is awful pretty. And uh, you see some fires and some tents. Um, in this world, there are many guilds. Uh, we're the weavers. There are also blacksmiths, glass makers. You're with a clan and a family based on what you do. So already, I think, the world, the fully original world in which Loom is set, is uh, incredibly evocative. Let's step forward into the darkness, continue to explore, and see if we can find any friends, colleagues, family, or further clues about this world. And again, so far we've already seen a number of really beautiful visuals simply by walking around. Hovering the mouse over something, uh, this icon appears in the corner, tells us it's a tapestry. Click it again. It's a section of the long tapestry. We are already being uh, acquainted with the mythology of this world. The threads describe the creation of the world and the passage of the two shadows. So moving right along here, um, there's a sense that you, you have entered a place that is steeped in an existing history, um, that this world was not made for you, the player, that, you know, you have sprung fully formed into it, and uh, it is it is inviting to you, but it's also indifferent to you, and, and challenges you to look and find out about its mysteries. Like, why is this particular piece of fabric torn? It's the last section of the long tapestry. Bobbin tells us, it illustrates the decline of the guilds and the gathering of a third shadow. Well, friends, I wonder if that's going to have any bearing on our adventure today. Um, what we're doing now is basically the introduction of the game, where it draws you in very gently. And uh, again, in contrast to popular adventure games that I grew up with, um, oh, we've come upon a little enclave meeting here. Uh, the elders are busy speaking among themselves. Uh, and of course, we don't want to interrupt, but uh, here we are, we're going to eavesdrop. Uh, you know, I don't 
want you to miss too much of this conversation that we're having, but the idea of bringing you into a, an adventure in such an inviting way, rather than dropping you in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of puzzles and items and, and the risk of certain death awaiting, pretty novel, pretty lovely. Uh, so here, Mother Hetchel is uh, apparently being accused of some kind of misdeed by the elders of her guild. Um, they seem to suggest uh, this reckless defiance is intolerable. Behind them you can see the shimmering lights and colors on the Great Loom, which is where the game gets its title. We'll learn more about it soon. Um, Hetchel, who has always upheld the rules of membership to the letter, um, is now being asked to speak to the elders. And These beautiful close-up faces that a lot of the Lucasfilm games did at the time and uh, gave a sense of dimension to all the characters. They had, they had them in several of those games. So I think they're talking about us, friends. Um, young Bobbin is soon going to wield the power of weaving, and uh, the advent of our, our magical abilities might be at hand, friend. And uh, Hetchel is urging everyone to stay by us, regardless of these circumstances that we're not yet familiar with. Um, don't reveal any secrets. I guess our mom's name is Signa. Uh, his training was forbidden by the council. And again, a lot of this was gone over in the lovely radio drama that shipped with the game, and I wish today's games came with radio plays, because wouldn't that be fun, friends, and it would be a good use of the time of all the marvelous voice actors we have in our field. Um, it grieves me to see your many years of faithful service end in this disgrace, says the Elder. Um, so it looks like uh, whatever Mother Hetchel was cr trying to convince them of on our behalf is, is not going to succeed. Um, yeah, so another interesting thing about the world of Loom is the way that the primary interaction mechanics are sort of planned around the goal of making it accessible and making it feel as if you're truly playing music or creating magic, or in this case both. Um, if you're not familiar with Loom, uh, a weaver is someone who weaves the fabric of reality itself. Uh, that's why the Great Loom seems to be so sacred uh, to them. By spinning drafts or singing songs, as this elder is doing right now. Perfect timing, elder, thank you. You can uh, effectively cast spells. Uh, after attempting to turn Hetchel into a swan, uh, they've only managed to achieve a swan's egg. Um, so interestingly enough, um, this is how we're introduced to the circumstances, and uh, off go the elders. Something is happening in the sky, and uh, I always found uh, all of this very lulling and pleasant, and, and the animations so evocative. They really struck my imagination when I was a kid. If the fact of a mysterious Swan Lake-themed computer game that shipped with a radio play, if that wasn't exciting enough, it also came with a book of patterns where you could write down songs you learned, and in fact, the ability to observe and listen and to record the information that the game gave you and, and reappropriate it to the proper context was more uh, a more important mechanical interaction for Loom than was you know the puzzles itself or the actual act of, of using the the die staff so as you can see everyone has turned into swans and off they go following this one leader swan to this great star opening in the sky it's quite the thing isn't it friends I know some people like to listen to lo-fi let's plays in a separate window, um, but I hope you're watching as well because uh, I have been talking over the mo most of the intro and I hope you uh, haven't missed what's happened. So now everyone has turned into swans and flown away and young Bobbin is left to make sense of it all. Uh, an abandoned dice staff, a swan's egg, and the great loom is where the story begins. Um, so now we the player have control of the game again, as you can see. You can look at the... This pretty pearly egg and when you touch the egg it sings a little song and the die staff on the ground glows and Bobbin tells you it's trying to open so when you it feels heavier than it looks uh, so we, we now we have this die staff in our hand and the control panel changes we have these notes on the bottom that maybe have to correspond to the uh, you know the songs that we heard and, and when you first get your book of patterns it does give you one draft to know, and that is the draft of opening. And if I were to cast a draft of opening on an egg, maybe it would open. So it's already written down, I already know it, but this tune might sound like the one you just heard. Oops. Sorry, friends, I made an error. Well, 
you'll get to see what happens when you do it wrong. Yeah, Bobbin says, I guess that's not a thing. So let's try it again. And you know, isn't that wonderful to have a child childhood memory of a of a tune that you'll never forget? A series of uh, three notes repeating from a uh, computer game. And now we uh, we encounter Mother Hetchel, who hopefully she's gonna let us go know what's going on, even though she's apparently a small black duck. She knows that we've been eavesdropping. She says, "What's been happening here, Hetchel? The whole village has flown away." And. Um, so yeah, now Hetchel says, I hoped the swan might come to save you. Uh, no, Mother Hetchel, we were uh, left behind. The swan has uh, woven a, a good deal of mischief, we, uh, we understand. Now what is there to be saved from, friends? Oh, look at the close-up of her face. They were going to turn you into a swan, as they tried to do to me. <laughs> she says, looks as if a signet was the best they could manage with these old bones. Oh, well, that's sort of charming in a way. So, uh, why do the elders want to get rid of me? I haven't broken any rules. Um, this is a lot of, an uncommon amount of story and exposition. I mean, maybe not for the time in adventure games, which were, you know, beginning, in, in, in a lot of ways led by Lucasfilm uh, and, and Sierra secondarily, to switch to more verbal storytelling jokes. Lucasfilm in particular, Lucasfilm games in particular, um, made writing the star of the adventure genre in a new way. You know, not that it wasn't before, because you know, I mean, they started out as text games, and you would need to be very evocative with, with uh, you know, short amounts of text. But uh, this sort of more lengthy and, and more involving circumstance feels felt new and fresh at the time, or, or so it did to me. Uh, the elders are banished. We're still here. The pattern is failing of its own accord. And soon it will come to an end. Uh, so great. We're the last person standing in our village, and uh, the world is about to end, and uh, a third shadow is coming. Sounds dangerous. Uh, and uh, we don't even know how to use this fancy staff that we got. Uh, so chaos is coming. The elders believed they could stop it. Now they know better. So should we? Uh, Mother Hetchel is warning us. If we can't stop the chaos, what can we do? Let's find out. We can escape, ideally. That would be nice. Wouldn't you like to escape, friends? Because I would. The swan has rescued the rest of our guild from the coming time of darkness. The way before us is now clear. We must find out where our flock has flown and join them if we can. Okay. So, uh, adventure is out there, everybody. And, uh, now we know what we need to do. We have to hold on to this die staff, according to Mother Hetchel, who raised us as her own after our mother mysteriously disappeared. Um, you won't be able to weave very much with it at first, I expect, but as you gain practice, more and more of its power will reveal itself to you. That sounds good, you know, it's nice to let people know in a narrative way what to accept, uh, what to expect mechanically. As long as the die staff remains in your hands, I'll know you're safe. If you ever lose it, take heart, I'll come to help you if I can. Well, why would she say that if we weren't at some point going to need help? It seems like it's going to be a dangerous journey uh, now we should find a way to leave this island. Our destiny lies beyond the sea. And away she goes. Uh, where are you going, Mother Hetchel? To follow the swan, she says. And look at how beautiful that, that tear in the fabric of the world just opens and swallows the little black duckling inside. Wish I knew why everyone keeps calling me loom child, he says. Well, okay, friends. Now control of this adventure is in our hands. We have our staff. And it's finally time... I think to begin our exploration in earnest. So uh, looking at things now, maybe something is different. If we've received new information about it um, now that we have a staff in our hands. Um, walking along again through this, this great and beautiful hall past the pieces of the long tapestry that apparently in these lovely swaths of monochrome fabric tell the story of our people. Look at this lovely bright green. This one is uh, the creation of the world. So it's, I don't know if there's too much to learn from these tapestries. Let's return to the main portion of the village. I used to always get stuck here at this point, friends, because when you first enter this tent, it just looks like you're kind of staring into the darkness, see, and that there's nowhere to go. It takes time to learn, you know, what the borders of every magical world that you enter are. Um, 
So off we go. Let's see what else is going on here and where we might use this die staff, where we might learn more. Huh. So you see some birds. I see a clam. A clam is closed and uh, it's time that we practice using our newfound powers with objects in the environment that lure us so we're told it's closed and just in that one little sentence that it's closed tight we're given a prompt to experiment again with the draft of opening. I really like when uh, an adventure game can nudge you in the right direction with just a few short words without a great hovering tutorial telling you what needs to happen. Um, and now we've we've gone ahead and fed some birds and they're eating and the clam looks kind of gooey now that it's open. It's not not my favorite sight. I don't I like shellfish quite a lot, but uh I'm not a mussels eater. Uh I do like clams though. So let's see what else this village has to offer us, the village of the weavers. Um I hope that you're excited already by what you've seen. This game is an incredibly thoughtful and meditative experience. Uh, let's see what's in this tent, friends. Uh, it's dark. Um, we can see our own eyes in the darkness when we hover over it. Do we have any way to illuminate the darkness? We don't know that yet. I don't think that opening the darkness will do any good, but if you try it, the game will sort of let you know that, you know, while you can open some things, darkness is not one of them. So we continue along. And we enter this other hut at the end. Now that everyone's gone, you know, there's no no harm. Ooh, what is this? There's a book on the table. The Book of Patterns. Very good. So the game is sort of letting you know that you need your own manual and that you should take it with you in the game. Um, here we see, what's this flask? Have a look at that. So now... Wow, when you spill the flask, a song plays. Uh, we don't have the notes to play it yet. If you see, we'll look at it again. It causes parts of the staff to illuminate that, that aren't visible to us yet. So this tells us that this flask will teach us a spell of some kind, a draft of some kind, when, uh, when we've learned more about the world and perhaps when we've unlocked some more notes. We found a dye pot. And it plays the song C, D, C, D. So now, what are some things that the dye pot could mean? Uh, is it about heating or boiling? If it was, wouldn't it just, why is it dye? You know, so here's, in order to test our hypothesis, let's, let's try some of these. This pile still needs dyeing. And again, the game is gently encouraging us to experiment with what drafts do and don't do. So uh, that worked. You know, the field of white stars always lets you know. We now know how to dye things green. That's pretty cool. Now, a funny thing happens when you play drafts in reverse that make this game a bit fun. So let's try that. We can also, by reversing the draft, undye things, interestingly. And now if we played our opening draft backwards on uh, something that was closed, don't you think we would, uh, or if we played the opening draft backwards on something that was open, we would uh, we would then be able to close it, which is pretty nice. So, um, off we go, welcomed into the world. Let's explore the woods over here, a tiny figure moving across the land alone. Doesn't it make you feel heroic, friends? Uh, try to get off the island at least. I'll I'll show you how to start with this game so that, uh, you know, you remember. Wow, look at all these uh, holes with owls in them. What could this mean? C. C. Aha! Each hole we look in, it begins to play a song in order. We have two C's so far. Are you writing this down for me, friends, in your little book of patterns? We have three C's, and what could the fourth note of the draft that the owls are trying to teach us be? This hole is empty. Well, I guess we won't know unless we find another owl and encourage him to return to his owl nest in the great spidery forest with the beautiful sparkling stars. I see an owl, don't you? Let's see. The owl is asleep. 
Can we wake up the owl, I wonder? Walking into the thorns, maybe. Ouch! And out comes a rabbit. There goes an owl. Amazing. Poor little fella. All right, well, can read some graves. In memory of Lady Cygna Threadbare. Hey, Threadbare's our name, friends. Destiny shall draw the lightning down from heaven, roll its thunder far across the sea, to where I wait upon the shore of wonder, on the day the sky is opened, and the tree is split asunder. Well, open the sky? What can that mean? Anyway, let's, uh, let's see about these owls over here. These nocturnal creatures preferring their dark spaces. And we've seen a dark room in this game. Are you, are you making the pathways that I'm making, friends? Are you thinking about how maybe what the owls have to teach us when we learn this fourth note has to do with the darkness? C, C, D. Okay, well, that's, that's not a difficult song to remember, friends, but please write it down in your book of patterns for me anyway. I used to love playing adventure games with a co-pilot, didn't you? Having a friend side by side at the computer taking notes, drawing maps, taking turns at the puzzles when one or the other of you got stuck. Now, you know, I, as a child I would sometimes get stuck on Loom, believe me, I would, but eventually solving it would make me feel so clever. And while, you know, as an adult fan of adventure games, I appreciate sometimes a certain obtuseness, a certain frustration, but I also think it's important, especially for young people and casual fans, to to get the thrill of having figured something out on your own. The feeling of learning to solve these puzzles, the, the feeling of learning how drafts work backward to front, made me feel so smart as a child, and I think it was that validation and that emotional nourishment that I received from playing games like Loom. D-E-D-C is for spinning, huh? What about spinning straw into gold? Yeah, so the the emotional nourishment that I got from learning to play games like this, I think were transformative, was transformative for me. It, wow, look at all this money. And uh, apparently we've cast enough spells that we've now learned a new letter, which is F. We got some gold, that's really good. So, you know, we helped the uh, weavers around the island with our chores before we left. After I saw um, Professor Moriarty's postmortem of Loom at GDC recently. You know, I don't normally do that thing where everybody hangs out after the conference to talk to somebody. Um, wow, there's the sky. Let's let's get a better view of the sky. But this time I, I, I felt compelled to because this game had been so important to me, and it was clear to me seeing him talk about it that there were some emotional memories involved for him in the creation of Loom. I think that I think that it was a challenging birth, so to speak, for him. And, um, you know, this game, although I think now it stands the test of time as, as one of the great adventure games, didn't register on the radar of a lot of players at that time as one of the hits, so to speak. Um, so I I had to go up to to Mr. to Professor Moriarty after, uh, after his talk and tell him that I don't think it was a mistake to make a game that children could figure out and feel proud about because maybe if I hadn't had Loom and a few other games like it that made their puzzles available to me and that gave me the joy of problem solving and mystery solving I mean who knows where I'd be today would I be doing this at all? You know, this is the reason why we love games because they they give us the experience of being clever and they give us a sense of order and harmony in our world. So anyway, friends, we've, we've struck it, we've struck down a branch from the sky and uh, as it pulls into the dock, I think we found a way off the island tonight, don't you? Um, I think that young Bob and Threadbare is going to climb aboard his little branch boat and see where else into the wide world his adventure takes him. And uh, what other guilds, guilds will he meet and whatever more powerful Drafts will he learn and, and, and songs will he sing, you know? Um, I hope you check out Loom for yourselves. Um, 
I think I just heard that it's become available to purchase uh, legitimately and in a stable fashion from the website Good Old Games, which is gog.com. Um, and if this is your first time joining us for Lo-Fi Let's Play, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm going to be um, putting the videos and posts about them on offworld.com from now on. Um, thanks to our friends at Rock Paper Shotgun for, for graciously syndicating me uh, for so long. I'm, I'm going to ask them if, if they're still willing to do that, even if Offworld is the home for most of my work these days. But if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll always know where to find a little bit of vintage adventure gaming, reminiscing, and gentle times with the games we love. Thank you so much for coming along, friends, and uh, I hope to see you again soon.